All right, we're playing Sherlock Holmes Awakened. This is a remake of a game they made in the early 2000s. Um, hopefully it's good. Should deals with some Cthulhu themes, some Lovecraftian stuff, so it should get a little scurry at times. But should be quite fun. Let's jump in. Shadow over London. Baker Street. Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidy houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. But if he's speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. to see what the postman brought today. They look so much younger than they did in the older games. Moved around with Waz, interact with objects. Sherlock Holmes is kind of an asshole. He is a narcissist, though, so I guess that makes sense. Move and hold to inspect. Uh, tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by, by Swedish princess Ildjö. Uh, chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained um, disappearance of Princess Allure's personal bodyguard. The longtime member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London while off-duty, never returned from his late-night promenade. A, spokes, a spokesman for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located as he is striking representative of the Scandinavian people. My dad gets noticed, whether by his peers or at the gentlemen's clubs, or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. What is that? Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering Barnes. books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. It is. He wants a tip. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. I don't see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant <laughs> discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Why are you so obsessed, Mr. Holmes? He's so rude to Mr. Watson. I don't know why he hangs out with him. What is all I'm that? I'm close. I know it. I just need one more piece to crack the case. Stabbed in the dark, wolf in pig's clothing. Uh, found your job before streams and playing... Uh, been playing Diablo 2 and 3 alongside your replays and watch your broadcast. Great stream. Love the variety here. Cheers. Well, thank you, Table Play. And thank you for choosing Dan Rage as your first subscriber emote. That's a fantastic choice. Nice shirt. Are you planning a trip? Yes, I'm going to go to uh, Misty Bay, the, um, the my Animal Crossing the Isle later. 
Rainy day. Why not dress for something more appropriate? The case. Open the case book. Maybe wardrobe tab and it put on a hat. Oh. Well, probably top hat. And there we go. Now I look dapper. <laughs> Very dapper indeed. Uh, Mr. Watson, you can put on a hat too since we're outside. Don't look at me. If you want the newspaper, you'll have to get your hands dirty. Uh, where did you put it? Where is the waste bin? Is there a map? Well, there's a waste bit. Nope. Ew. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. Oh. So it's not covered in shit. That's a good... That's good to know. The cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. It's not madness, it's Get true. The strand. Get your copy of the strand here. Child. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. True. Very true. Any breaking news today? The dog accident. It's the talk of the town. Yes, yes. Besides the tribe on the front page, anything about burglaries? I'm not sure, sir. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me. Did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm. Like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Oh. Cool. Now I can take the day off. Very smart child. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears, if you have more shillings. You little sneak. We got a new question in Mind strand. Palace. Open Get the case book. The Navigate to the Mind Palace inside. Select relevant pieces of evidence to produce the answer. Who ruined the strand? Books from Barnes. Cactus spine potentially poisoned. Who ruined the strand? Testimony. Books from Barnes, maybe? Barnes, the bookseller, ruined the, the newspaper. The newsboy said the suspicious man is carrying a stack of books. One of Mr. Barnes, a local news. Books out deliver a novel for Mr. Watson. A cactus spine for assassin. Loud bang. Visit to Mr. Barnes is in order. 
Come now, Mr. Holmes. Murder? Yes, Barnes has his quirks, but he also has his... Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand. You can pin the evidence for quick access. Case book. Pin the evidence with a bookshop photo by pressing X to find the bookshop. Bookshop photo. Oh, that one. Pin evidence. So I'm looking for a book that says Barnes Bookseller. And it is where? That was in walking distance. Ah, uh, Barnes Bookshop. All right, let's uh, unpin the evidence. How'd you get in front of me? Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. He's Sherlock Holmes. He's probably saw many crimes. Of course, you'd want to take him down. Observe. Bags under his eyes, effects of overwork. His hands are real dirty. Ink, newspaper ink. Leans heavily on right leg, sore left leg. High heels wants to look taller. Uh, he is a workaholic. Mr. Barnes developed a limp as and has large back and for the role of long hours of intense work. He's not very confident, tries to appear taller wearing high heels. Seems um, unlikely that such a person be involved in murder plot, even if the ink in his hand just he's one who soiled the newspaper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please? Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you come in. Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it and pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. He's acting real sus. Like, real sus. Ever a catalog of exotic plants on the uh, counter. The name of the catalog reads, Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Okay. What is I could hardly here? imagine anything more macabre. That's a very cool looking painting. Like what the hell? Bunch of floating scepters and a light, very Lovecraftian. Seems evil. Oh my god, there's a dog. So, Barnes has a dog now. Who's a good boy? Oh, that's a hound. It's a hound dog. Ladder. The ladder is broken recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Might explain his limp. Um, what's going on over here? Finest view London has to offer. Ladies. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. 
Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Dead flowers on display. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. Someone's trying to get him to do something. Someone probably tried to get him to murder Mr. Holmes. Barnes has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. Hmm. Uh, thank you, QT Rambo and Digital uh, Dark Knight for the three-month <sighs> resub. Appreciate that, guys. Maybe talk to that woman across the street. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. Some nice flowers. You people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. True. Brock, thanks for that research. Patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. Oh, cactus needles. Familiar spine. Is this what I found in my dustbin? Probably. And there's a crack. It is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Hmm. Katniss, thank you for the five gift subs for chat. Appreciate that. Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? I'm going to observe you first, madam. Uh, wearing makeup for beauty or concealment. Distant look. Voids eye contact or distracted. Morning brooch. Honoring deceased husband. Clean boots. Changed shoes upon arrival. Luxury fabric, unusual work attire. Wearing makeup, clean boots, distant look. She's probably ready to move on. Miss Flaming wears a morning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from an expensive fabric that's not suitable for work. Her shoes show no trace of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search of someone or something. Perhaps she's waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she's trying to move on as just by her makeup and nice outfit. Perhaps she is distressing to attract someone's attention, or simply because she's learned to love herself again. Aww. Mrs. Fleming, you look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No. no. But your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. Fine. Yeah, if you want to type Dan Stare when we're j looking over someone, it helps me, like, look at them awkwardly. Like... Choose evidence. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Oh. Crackpot? One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. Though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Really? I don't know anything about this, sorry. Um... Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. 
What do you make of the flowers in Barn's shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. Ah, I see a love triangle here. Well, love. Uh, the Sneaky says, so this is a remake. Love the older Sherlock Holmes hated the most recent Chapter 1 game. Yeah, this is a remake of the older game called The Awakening, which was in the, I think, the early 2000s? It's been a while. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Are you, Are you sure? Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. I don't know anything about this, sorry. Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm Maybe. just a flower seller. I don't know anything about this, sorry. I'm gonna ask every Are single you sure one of you. Are you asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes, no, not really. Yes, no. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course, but we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog, and most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would etch such longing onto his face. I think someone's in love with you, madam. Oh, doggy. Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. So he got a dog to um, have an excuse to talk to her. Yeah, man's in love. Man is in love. You think behind the counter? No. Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. Why are you being so weird? We're looking for a cactus needle in a haystack. Hmm. A spine in a book stack? No, come on, Watson. Think. I don't see any interactions in here. It must be something else. Hmm. I wonder he would run away like that, though. It's really, really sus. Pulse, please. Pulse. Impressive stature, strong gaze. I think this man deserves a knighthood. Really, Holmes? Arthur. How can you be so sure? On rare occasions, Watson, it can suffice to trust one's gut. Arthur Igna Ignatius Conan Doyle, the author of the books. Oh, yeah. Well, that's cute. They put a little reference to uh, the author of the books in there. He wrote the Sherlock Holmes games. Sir, are you you were like having a very intense pee there. Very weird. Very strange. Huh. Why is Barnes acting so strangely? Well, let's see. Miss Fleming. Um, Miss Fleming on Barnes. And... No, Miss... Missing observation. The strand is missing. Mr. Barnes. Mr. Barnes loves Mrs. Fleming. Barnes displays a bouquet of dead flowers that attract attention to Mrs. Fleming and a florist. 
He may hope she will be coming to come to his shop and give him watering advice, or it simply be a symbol of his desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus, which he ordered from the catalog on this counter. Questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love, since the catalog presents the cactus are immortal. Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on Strand outside Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. We've solved the hmm. mystery. I uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Mr. Mr. Barnes. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalog and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. Why doesn't... I don't understand why people are so obsessed with height. Like, why does no one like... Don't People like short kings. They're fine. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. You're such... Sherlock, help the man. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts, and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh... Yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. Uh, salt, Peter. Explosion rocks docks. Locals at Port of London had a rude awakening last night with loud bangs and a thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Mosca had docked at Pier N3 in the early er, evening en route to Europe when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. Port Authority has yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any of the crew, if any crewmen were on board at the time. I was report seeing saltpeter leaking to the river, but with the area still off limits to the workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. That sounds like some Cthulhu stuff, Chant. Vertrack, thank you for that 39-month reset. It says, Dan Love, back to Dan Lurk and Dan Story. Ooh. Or, I mean, Dan, listen. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Let me know if there's any way I can make it up to you. Tell you what. Tomorrow's edition of The Strand is on me. Well, thank you. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied, 
I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. It doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. A case? Truly. <gasps> Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery in all the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. Sounds like a mystery, Chet. We have a case. Type Dan Corpora if you also have a case. Wait, we're not we're, much further now. Uh, which house, sir? Why don't you lead the way? Steinwick's Manor. Oh, that one. Steinwick is just down the street from Barnes's bookshop. I see a cop. And a guy in a suit. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, Real crimes? A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimahia breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. Yeah, I'm sorry. The cops usually show up many hours after the crime's already been committed and then begrudgingly make a report, maybe, if they feel like it. Tell me about Kimi here. He's foreign, a Maori, all the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen, and as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English, never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. Hmm. May I see your servant's bedroom? This shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. Is there any reason Kimahia may have left? I you should sound not. like an asshole. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. All the cabbage he could eat? Did Kimahia make off with anything of value? Heavens, no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with Is some this a rabbit or a person? No, no. I kept his wages in my safe for security. I take it this is the first time Kimahira has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. 
Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. Rescued I'll him from savagery? What does that mean? You brought him here and made him do busy work for you? And feed him just cabbage? <laughs> like, and make him live outside in a shack? Wow. This guy is the worst kind of jerk. He thinks he's so noble and so nice and kind. But he's a real dick. Hmm. Is that a footprint? Chewing tobacco. <laughs> Which is one of the most disgusting habits someone can do. A shoe print, roughly size 11 with a worn-out sole. These are a workman's boots. It's like, chewing is fine, but it's, it's when they spit it out. That's the... Ugh. Ugh. Hmm. Oh, I can move a little bit. I can't seem to do anything with whatever that is. Won't let me inspect whatever that is for some reason. Hmm. Maybe I need something for that? Found the footprint. I don't know. Guess we'll look over here first. Contrary to you pick up small dudes in the world around you, we see a, a wavy green circle. Press Q to observe the object more closely. Don't forget to pin the relevant evidence. Some clues won't be visible without it. Would have been nice if you told me about that earlier. Hmm. Knee, like print. knee print. Someone knelt here. Huh. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. Oh, what? So someone was waiting there for this guy. Parallel tracks, wheels. Who could have left these tracks? They seem fresh. Hmm. Wait a minute, these aren't tracks. They're a cat! Yeah, Timus is up there on the counter. Let's see what's in the little shack. Grain? Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. <laughs> you can see the face in there. Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Uh -huh. Someone hit their head here. 
That is hilarious. <laughs> Can I make a mold of it? I don't see um, anything else to click on. Rotates so quickly. A small navy spyglass. Yes. Hmm. Piece of clothing. A scrap of Hessian. The hell is Hessian? These were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. Hmm. Button chops, the remains of a meal. Hell is that? A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Ooh. The ashes are long since cold. No air coming through it. They're doing opiates. A Maori nose fruit. Ngurus, they're called. Ngurus? Clothes that? made of Hessian. His stem really so miserly. Stenwick makes his servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone. Is this a Tanifa, a Maori water spoon, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. So he makes him live out in this shitty little shed in the cold and rain, which is practically touching the ground. There's hardly any floor boards. Someone blocked it up. <gasps> the rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Uh oh. I'm sensing foul play. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. A lock with an unusual keyhole. Doing that, we're missing a step. This guy was over here, lurking in the shadows. Are you a good girl? Who do you think did the murder? Huh? Do you know who? Do you know who committed the crime? No.
What, you'll tell me if I give you a treat? So if I give you a treat, you'll tell me who did it? Okay. Okay, never mind, he's not hungry apparently. No stink. We're missing a step, two steps somewhere. We see the track. Someone parallel track wheels. Someone obviously rolled someone out of here. Somehow. We gotta try the other side of this door. Let's go out and around and see what's going on. Because it seems very sus right now, Chad. Very sus. Makes you go, hmm. Things aren't adding up. My dog nephew gets bad gas. You, you have a nephew who's a dog? Your dog, nephew? I don't know, I don't know. There's no going out of here. Fine. The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. I thought you were meant to be intelligent. Are you joking? Why would I know this? I thought you were meant to be intelligent. Hmm. Where on earth are you going with this? I don't know. I'm just trying to spam evidence on you, sir. See if something sticks. Long, Captain. This guy's an asshole, though. Where does the trail lead? Chewing tobacco remains. Spyglass. Character Swanson. Nope. The Strand Explosion. Hmm. 
I'm missing something. Missing some evidence somewhere. Nothing in there. Some guy here. Am I missing something? Something must have it. Did it explode? made of hessian. Is Sten really so miserly? No air coming through it. Hmm. Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. I don't know. Why show me these tracks if I can't do anything with them? There's one issue with these games, sometimes you get like stuck trying to figure out what pixel you didn't clip find. tracks but who could have left them of an unknown person to be found in the statue. Judgment of more soul, the footprints of someone from the working class. Someone chat spat chewing tobacco. Hmm. Um shaped like a human head. I guess we'll have to Okay, so that's up. Yeah, maybe we have to pin evidence for it to like show up. Must have been opened at some point. I don't know. This back here is not the crime scene. Hello. 
Do you happen to know Kimihir's shoe size? Oh. I wouldn't have the foggiest. But I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. So he didn't wear shoes. Has Kimihir ever indulged in tobacco? No. The man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimihir's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. What does that mean exactly? I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimihir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimihir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Yes, it is. I bet seeing a big, enormous, muscular man who's naked would be slightly distracting, sir. So I, I don't. I see that you Why would close him. Why are you still them. here? If you find my man, I have a marvelous whiskey with your name on it. Unknown person with a spyglass and okay. Okay, unknown man out here. Stuff in the pipe is probably, with opium, is probably the correct option. They knocked him out and then dragged him and then he fell here. about this one though parallel tracks hmm uh, apparently all the, the mysteries in this revolve around some sort of cult all right let's see the strand she went to back over me my glass footprints in the garden Beta Hesiod. No. I'm missing some other piece of evidence somewhere. Missing something in the garden. what it is. I don't see that like, I can click anything currently. <laughs> Always wear colos made of sacks. Never use tobacco. 
Fresh tracks in the garden. Who could have left them? Missing two more pieces. I can't figure out what it's just on. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. Hmm. Oh, here's two new things. Okay, there we go. Parallel tracks. Grass doesn't grow here. Pile of logs falling. Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. So they put pushed him. No. No. Someone took him on the cart. But why? Why would they? What would be the point? Oh my god, it was a crash dummy. A crash dummy did it. I knew it. Their plan is to replace all people with dummies and all dummies with actual people so that they can experience what it's like to be thrown against the wall in a car. Like, I don't think I saw that cloth palace yet. Bum, 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 bum. We're missing some sort of evidence somewhere. Another... Some observation place we're missing. Last one must be outside, but I don't know where else it would go. Hmm. Yeah, maybe if we clip pet another clue, let's see. So I guess. Maybe that little eye symbol means that you have to use the observation nearby while it's pinned. Oh, yep, right there. Okay, so that's what that means. Usual form, bent to left, key print missing. Stenwick is no angel, but he's one of my few clients. Please try to remain courteous. All right, let's see here. Nope. The man definitely did it. Validate. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, 
then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes Big total brain! Sense. Chat, make sure you're keeping notes, all right? Gotta keep notes, because we, we gotta fig figure out the crime and who did it and stuff. So make sure you're keeping lots of notes today. Let's go, it's gonna come up on the test later. Well, he was definitely abducted by some guy. How does no one see someone hauling a man on a cart, though, and not notice it? It's like, hmm, suspicious. Well, the notable features of the abductor. Chewing tobacco. Spyglass. Um... Footprints. No. Uh... Strand. Probably a sailor. Clothes made of Hessian? Nope, missing something. Missing some clue somewhere. You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimmy here. Likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? I found the residue of narcotics in Kimihir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now, one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimahir never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. Hmm. Almost finished. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimahir was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why haven't you found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second <laughs> you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering my investment. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. Wow, you are a dick. Truly, there is no better evidence of a man's nature than the way he treats those who help him. And you, sir, are a brute. The cruelty of your ignorance about the Maori people, your selfish attitude to a man's kidnapping. Uh, the point is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity. This man is an utter asshole. God. He just wants his servant back. He doesn't care that he was abducted at all and could possibly be dead. He's a brute. Mm -hmm. 
Power corrupts the tall arrogance from that. And the rich is normal. Unfortunately, true. Abductor's tray. Oh my god, that bike. Oh, so impractical. 